Another very important subject that we should discuss on this particular job site is the different brick that are being used so that the bands and different effects on the face of this building behind us will stand out. So in my mind, I begin to worry about several different things here. Later on when the cleaning is done, what the manufacturer might suggest for this dark brick to my left or this deep red to my right as far as a cleaner is concerned probably would be too harsh a cleaner for this light gray brick. So, once all of these brick are on the facade of this building and the cleaning takes place, think with me for a moment, would you not have to use whatever the manufacturer suggests for this brick to be cleaned on all the brick, no doubt, to keep from hurting this one? That being the case, if the mason each day could just brush down the work that he's laid that day with a brush like this one, knocking off the bigger splatters of mortar that just naturally get on a brick wall during construction. Also, when specifying mortar, perhaps some thought should be given to the weakest mortar or using the weakest mortar possible. Type N mortar is what's normally specified for brick veneer. Really not looking for strength. So unless there was some region of the country that you were in that you needed to bump up in strength, maybe to a type S mortar, why would you? because the stronger the mortar, the harder it's going to be to clean off the face of the brick later. So perhaps the weakest mortar that would do the job should be specified and consideration should be given to the weakest element in the wall when the cleaner is selected. We're not ready to clean the brick as you can see. And uh, there's a couple of things that we need to take into consideration prior to the actual cleaning process. The prep work that you see that's already taken place behind me is very important and I'd like to point out a couple of things to you. Some of the windows that we use nowadays have coatings on them for various reasons. So you see we've masked off the windows so that the cleaner doesn't etch the glass. Also, at times, the cleaning isn't done until some of the light fixtures have already been installed. We're ahead of the electrician a bit here, but we've taken the precaution of going ahead and covering up the electrical box. And uh, not just the windows and perhaps some of the electrical components of the building, but if you'll notice, the base of the wall is a ground face block. It's a bit more sensitive, as far as cleaning is concerned, than the brick above it. So we've taken uh, the precaution of masking that area off as well before we start the cleaning process. As the masons are laying brick, sometimes uh, little bits of mortar get splashed against the wall. So what the crew's doing now in preparation before the cleaner's added is scraping off larger areas of mortar that got on during the construction process. In just a few moments we'll begin adding the cleaner to the wall. The ongoing cleaning process that you see is very, very important. I think you'll agree that this could make or break the final look of a building. Proper cleaning is so very important. So I'd like to talk about the steps that must take place in order to have a beautiful job when we're all finished cleaning. It's almost impossible, most important thing, it's almost impossible to get too much water on the face of the wall prior to adding the cleaner. If you could think about this single brick for just a moment as an entire wall, what is it that we really want to clean? Is it not just the face? We don't want to clean the body of the brick, only what's exposed on the surface. So, keep in mind that a clay brick is very porous. Thus, a finished wall is very porous. If we add enough water to the face of the wall prior to adding the cleaner to totally satisfy the thirst of this brick, we've done a good thing. Because now, when we add the cleaner, it'll stay on the face of the brick. Most manufacturers of cleaners suggest that once you add the cleaner, you only let it stay on the face about three to five minutes and then begin to rinse. So the steps are, 
a bit of cleaning to get the larger clumps of mortar off, then several passes with just pure water over the face of the brick to satisfy its thirst, then adding of the cleaner, allowing it to work for three to five minutes, and then a good thorough rinse from top all the way to the bottom. On this particular building, we did mention, so I'll go back to it just for a moment, that we have so many different elements, different brick, different colors of brick, and also the ground face block at the bottom. So in this cleaning process, since it's impossible to mask off all those areas, you'd have to find out which element is the most sensitive to the cleaning solution and use that to clean the entire wall. Please notice that in our cleaning demonstration, start to finish, that the cleaning crew has not gotten too close to the wall with the end of the wand or the tip of the wand. Using too fine a tip or getting too close to the wall can cause damage both to mortar joints as well as to the face of some of the more sensitive brick that are on the market. So these cleaners, and properly so, have remained a distance both when they added the cleaner and as they rinsed it down. Very nice job.